Hey everybody. So uh, my husband let me bring uh, more sewing machines into the basement. So I'm here in our basement, which is a horrible mess, like a tornado came through from Home Depot. Um, but we're in the middle of remodeling. But anyway, okay, so sewing machines. So I'm gonna try to do a video that talks about a clutch motor. And I just brought this FAF uh, 134 into the house. And so I, it has a really great uh, clutch motor on it that I can uh, show you all the parts because they're all exposed. So I'm going to show you a little bit about this machine and the clutch motor. So hang on, let me put you in the phone holder and turn you around. Okay, so I'm not an expert on these things, okay, but basically this is a clutch motor. It came on this table with this FAF. Uh, 134-6-2BS that I got um, and basically I wanted to try to explain to y'all that don't understand what a clutch motor is and why one person might want a, a servo and why one, somebody might want a clutch. So y'all know I do industrial sewing machines and I also do chain stitch embroidery. When it comes to chain stitch embroidery most people want a servo to go slow. And um, oh, this is going to be a longer video than I thought, but most people want to use a pulley like this size on their motor to go slow. If you put a small pulley on your motor and use the larger part of your hand wheel, you'll go slow. So most people doing leather work or precision like chain stitch and border, you want a tiny pulley like this. Most servos come with a pulley this size, okay? A stock pulley this size on, and I usually change them out, okay? So this, this here's an old clutch motor. This is the belt driving pulley, and you can see, compared to like a regular servo pulley, it is huge. Um, so whoever was using this machine really wanted to go at high speed all the time, super fast, okay? Never seen a pulley quite this big. Okay, so this is where the belt would go, right here, and it would go up to the machine up here, okay? Again, excuse all the mess in the background in the basement. So I don't have a belt on because I just wanted to demonstrate the motor. So I put um, some silver Sharpie here on this. This is, I don't know which side is which, but this is part of the motor that spins. And this is the clutch plate, and inside here is a pad that when it contacts this one, it these two make contact, and this starts to spin, and it rotates the hand wheel on the machine. So I put this here, this little mark here, so you all could see the speed at which this spins. This clutch motor here is a 1,725 RPM clutch motor. So that means when I turn the motor on, this shaft, which contains this part here is spinning at 1725 rotations per minute. Okay, so then it's attached to the pedal right here, okay, through this normal stick thing. And, and then you push down on the pedal and it, it actuates the clutch. Okay, so let me just kind of go over the parts real quick here. So this is the pivoting arm which pushes this doohickey here in which pushes everything to the left and makes your clutch plate contact the motor the spinning doohickey thingy mobby on the motor okay and then over here this is a brake so when you push down on the pedal let's see if I can, ow, ow, let me see if i can get in here and do this um when you push down on the pedal all right, I'm gonna have to put my foot on the pedal. Sorry, I'm sitting on the floor. When you push down on the pedal, this is just a rubber piece that's adjustable in height. It comes away from the pulley. Ugh. Wait a minute. It comes away from the pulley and lets it spin. And this one may not be adjusted right because when you push it down all the way, it slows it down. No one's gonna sew at full speed. And then when you push back, this rubber thing comes up and it hits this and stops it, okay? So basically, brake on, brake off, brake on, brake off, okay? At the same time, brake goes off, these two plates are coming together, watch that. And then 
when these touch, there's a friction plate in here, usually it's cork or a piece of leather, that will make this start to spin. Okay, now why am I explaining this all to you? Okay, well, servos don't go this fast. Servos you can put down to like 500 RPM at the slowest, and if you have a very tiny pulley on your motor, this pulley's spinning like a lot of times, and in that time the belt goes up to your machine, and it's turning the hand wheel on your machine, okay? So let's um, talk about slipping the clutch. So if you step on the gas here, okay, and those two plates go together, your machine is going to be spinning at basically 1700 RPMs. Okay, that's really fast. The only way to go slow is you have to slip the clutch, which means these two plates are slipping, not fully engaged, okay? So I'm gonna turn the machine on now and we'll take a look at that. So the power is here. This is a really quiet clutch. Let me put you guys into the phone holder. Um, sorry, I should have paused it. Okay, so you're in the phone holder, sorry. Okay, so now you can see, okay, this, this thing here is spinning at 1700 RPMs. I'll move you over here a little bit. Okay. I'll turn it off and you can see. I think this motor, I think there might be a break in the motor because it something, I hear something and it slows down pretty quickly. So you remember that silver line I painted on there? You see it? There it is. Okay. Turn the motor back on. It's spinning really fast over here. So when I I'm going to step on the pedal now, and you see that that plate starts to move over. Okay. Sorry, I put my phone holder right in the way of what I'm trying to do. Um, so when I step on the pedal, those two plates are stuck together now, and this uh, pulley here, it's literally spinning at 1,725 RPMs. Okay. I can back up put on the brake, it stops everything. Oh, now you can't see the brake. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so the motor is still spinning. All right, push on the pedal. Everything's spinning, okay. Let off, it's still spinning. Push on the brake, it stops, all right. No one, really sews at that high speed unless you're, you know, factory worker or professional or really fast. Um, so how do you slow it so so at slower speeds? You have to slip the clutch. So what does that mean? This is the clutch. It's like driving a car, like driving a stick shift car. You start to make contact, okay, and the this is the uh, driver, dri driving wheel, not the driven wheel, the driving wheel, I think. It starts to touch the other spinning thing, but it's not going as fast because it's slipping, okay? And it's kind of, it's hard to de demonstrate without a belt on because the belt and the machine give a little bit of friction. But you can see right now I have it moving pretty slowly. It's not a consistent speed but it's certainly not going as fast as full speed, which is now full speed, okay? So that's what slipping the clutch is. I, I'm barely making contact with the other plate, so it starts to spin, but it's not making full contact, so it's going very slowly. It, this is hard for me to modulate this um, because as it starts to grab more, it speeds up, and then as it grabs less, it stops. So basically, sorry, my arm's hitting the phone holder. Basically for anyone sewing on this type of clutch motor that wants to go at like a normal speed, it's pretty hard. I mean, you'll get used to it and you can stop at any time but that's what's involved with slipping the clutch. 
if I'm not slipping the clutch, I'm going full speed, which is amazingly fast. So I don't know anyone that can really do that unless you're doing a long run or something that doesn't require accuracy. Um, but that's what slipping the clutch is, okay? So I just wanted to try to explain that to everyone so they could understand. Um, like in a car, if you're driving a stick shift car, you only slip the clutch on, on engagement from stop to start and while changing gears maybe, but probably not that faster shift change. So it's only really like taking off slowly uphill that you do this. Um, but that's what you would be doing. I would be doing this constantly trying to sew at slower speeds. That's full speed. This is coasting. And then this is stopped. Okay. So that's basically what a clutch motor looks like. This one is very interesting that everything's on the outside. So it's just, I thought I'd take this moment to make y'all a video. Um, I've never seen a pulley this size. Um, it's huge. And I'm just, I just turned the motor off. Um, it's really huge. And uh, I might not be able to use this machine if I can't successfully slip the clutch to make it go. All right, so that's my video on how to slip the clutch for uh, a vintage industrial sewing machine. I hope maybe it's been helpful. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too confusing. If you have any comments or questions or anything that, you know, any information you want to share, I'm not an expert and I don't know everything, but just here, you know, trying to help everyone learn. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you.